Do they, do the coaches, I mean, they, they used to quite regularly ring players at home for a chat about something. They still do that sort of thing or not? Yeah, I mean, look, I've had a lot of different senior coaches over the last 11 years, but Dimmer's fan, Damien's fantastic at it. Uh, guys that are struggling, you'll get them around for a beer or a juice, whatever whatever they uh, prefer, and, and, and have a good heart-to-heart chat, not necessarily about football, but just to hear about how they're going. Because if you understand the person, then you can help them more as the footballers. He's very approachable like that. The difficulty is the coaches now spend ridiculous hours just behind computers, planning, reviewing, watching games, doing meetings. It's it's harder to fit in that contact time. I think it's such a, a pivotal part of, of being a manager, a leader, or a coach. When I sat in all the team meetings at Carlton for a couple of days and the, pre- the, the pre-match address and the after-match, the wind-down when they were beaten by Collingwood, uh, I, d- I didn't understand much of what was going on. It, was, <laughs> it really was beyond me. They were using terms I just didn't understand. That is. It's the footy jargon that gets you. If, you. if you had a little glossary of what all the different words were, it would probably help. But what I find, I like to ask people that have come in just for a, a visit or a couple of visits what their impression on how the meetings are conducted, more so than the actual content. Because I, I feel, I mean, I've known this my whole life since I was 17. I don't know anything different. But the feedback I get is we're so direct with our feedback that it would rattle, I think, a lot of people in business. And if you didn't do something well, you are told and you're told bluntly and directly. And if you don't fix it, you get a warning, then you're out of the team. If you don't fix it at the end of the year, you're out of the squad. You don't have a job anymore. There's no review system. There's no workplace bullying or anything like that. Obviously, when there's, there's certain things you can't do. But as far as swear words and... Uh, and whatever else comes along, it you you just get told. So I'm interested to hear your opinion on. Well, yeah, that's pretty blatant, isn't it? You screwed up. You know, the coach. I don't know so much screaming, but it can be very, uh, very defined and very pointed in the criticism. The other thing that struck me is the intrusion on your life. Um, you know, some of the players being asked about their sex lives or their uh, their sleeping habits or what did you eat yesterday, filling in little little forms every day. Do you go through that? Yeah, we do that. We've got iPads set up. First thing you do, you weigh in, you type in your weight, how's your back out of five, how have your hamstrings, your ankles, how'd you sleep, how's your motivation, how are you coping, the mental one, the hydration test. I was sitting on the table with Adrian Anderson last night. Obviously, I oversaw football underneath um, Andrew Dimitro for quite a long time. And he was asking about that. Oh, how do you think the game's changed over the last two or three years with that demand on players? I said, well, physically, it's at its absolute capacity, I think, at the moment. But the hardest part or the biggest change has been the last few years, the mental demand. Because exactly like you're saying, the expectation and the the diligence and the the analysis, every little bit of that and every extra assistant coach or uh, fitness staff or sports scientist you bring in demands a little bit more time and effort from the player so a lot of the core stuff isn't actually kicking the footy anymore. It's about getting your body right, getting your skin folds right, making sure you've seen enough footage. Have you been to this meeting? When a lot of the time with the young guys, they just think they're out there to kick the footy. So you've got to learn that, and then you can um, adapt. But the, when do you relax? When do you, you know, how do you wind down? I remember sitting with Shane Y. Woden some years ago at a lunch. I think it was a year after he'd won the Brown Loan. He wasn't having a great year. And I can't remember why he was at this lunch. He must have been injured. Uh, but the, he was weighing his food. He was asking him to weigh his food before it was provided to him. And oh, there was another Melbourne player there who said, oh, he takes it all too seriously. But he, he was really uh, into that sort of detail. I thought, geez, this pressure's too much. I've actually heard that before. And look, I've seen guys pretty much go to the same extent. For me, I find it's moderation in moderation. I used to be quite anal about all the things I ate and did and hours of sleep. And I'm still quite diligent, but I make sure to have my fun. If I want to eat some bad food, have a couple of beers during the week, I'll do that. If I want to go for extra training on the way here day off, I dropped into the gym because we've been you know, having a rough patch. Sometimes it's better just to work your way out of it. So you go and do your extra training. If I want to go away for a weekend and we get a weekend off, I'll go as far away as I can just to completely switch off. And with that balance, I find I give more to football. Whereas too many guys I find are scared to just be who they are and do what they really like to do because they don't think it's the right thing. But what is the right thing? There's such a scope and spectrum for different players. Talking about-